Well, hello. <laughs> Welcome, YouTubers. It's Tim Time here again. In case you never saw this, this is <laughs> this is the inside of a TS-940, the radio that I should have a zipper installed on. So, I have an intermittent, very intermittent issue where the radio will not transmit on AM, extremely low output on single sideband. I, I believe CW is okay, but I can't say for sure. And I get full power on FM. Uh, tap on the radio a little bit and works fine for a while. Tap on once or twice. I figured it was the infamous solder joint on these radios that goes bad. So I was actually looking up <coughs> a picture of the circuit board to show Chris here what the uh, bottom of the circuit board looks like and how you inspect those solder joints before I took it apart because I really didn't want to take it apart again, believe it or not. But uh, when I did a search for it, I found uh, a fella had something posted on QRZ, and it's uh, his Alpha Delta 8 Bravo uniform, and it was just posted in April 17 of 2020. And he's saying that he had almost the problem he described that was funny, because it was almost the exact same thing I had told Chris I had experienced with this. And he said that he found a bad solder joint on the board near uh, L35, which is a uh, filter, a transformer rather, and uh, it's right here. And where he actually has circled is a connector, and that comes from the car, the carrier to the car two board. So I wanted to uh, see if if I was motivated. I just wanted to try and manipulate that connector a little bit and see if I could simulate the problem. The main thing I was getting was it seemed like receive was dropping off a little bit, but my uh, AM carrier went from 25 to zero. So I'm going to try that right now and just see what happens with it. So I want to, uh, first thing I'm going to see is, is if it has any effect on receive. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm not on the, uh, not on the dummy load. Let me make sure I'm not transmitting. Oh yeah. Now it's so there is a problem there. Yeah. I was getting it consistently as I wiggled it. Let me turn that down. I was getting it consistently as I wiggled it. for a few minutes. However, it could be the connector itself was just bad. Maybe put it under the microscope. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give it a shot and look in a second here. We looked at this. That's the, uh, the connector right there. And this is the connector that it connects to, so we'll check these pins as well. And I like to get in there with a little, I have like a little straight pin I get in there with and I put a little little bend on them to make sure that the, they're still good. But I'm going to get this under the microscope. We'll be back. So we can change that out. And... A dog tester. This is a dog tester. Is it a cat? Nope, it's a dog. Mouse? Nope, it's a dog. Chicken? Nope, it's a dog. Horse? Nope, dog. Okay. All right, what about the actual product? Let's check this. I want to check these with my new Calvin leaves I just put on here yesterday. Put that on, and it's telling me it is a resistor at 0.572 kilo ohms. Actually, 572 ohms. So, let's see. 560, and if it's, what, 5%? What would 5% of 560 be? Well, 10% would be 56. So it would be like 20, about 30 ohms. So it's still well within 5%. So we're good. We're good. R23. So let's see. There's a 
diode, a capacitor, then a diode, and then the two close ones are the resistor. So let's see, there's that pin. It's always hard to find out exactly which ones. And then there should be three things. That pin. One, two, three, and then the fourth thing over. And it's slightly down. There's that pin. One, two, three, and then the fourth thing over, and it's slightly down. That doesn't look right. Second pin. One, two, three, four, fifth thing over. There we go. And it's slightly down, and that would be it right there. One, two, three, four, fifth pin over. Okay, I love this solder sucker. It's the greatest invention ever made. Now, where is that resistor Q? R23. Some shielding on that or not? No, I shouldn't. There's nothing that it's up against but a capacitor, and the capacitor has plastic on it. So, see what they do is they actually, yours are painted so that it, it doesn't cause a short. So let me solder this guy in here, like so. So on these older boards, I find you don't want to use too much heat, just enough because the uh, traces will start to come off. Have that happen on a Kenwood 820. So let's see. They look nice and good. So I'm just going to clean them off a little bit. Ran out of alcohol. Chris drank it all. Yeah. Okay. And then there's the other guys. The flux that comes on this solder is actually supposed to be corrosion safe. I mean, I don't know if I believe that or not, but, well, but hey, we'll go. With, we'll go with it. So don't want to take a chance. Here's these two guys here. That's the ones he said came loose. We're going to suck the solder off them and redo them again. together without giving them some kind of attention. Okay. I 
Yeah, you got to be careful too when you're soldering and remembering that the other side is plastic. So I try and get on there, get it nice and heated up, not mess with it too much. And not melt the other side. Yeah. There we go. Clean those off in a second. Didn't melt the other side. We're good. So, let's see. Here was this. Normally I use alcohol. Uh, just el rubbing alcohol for this. Or uh, mineral spirits, depending on what kind of flux it is. Sometimes some flux comes off better with others, other than others, rather. So this is electronic cleaner. Yeah, that well, that's actually just for contacts, but it works nice for breaking down the flux as well uh, to get it off there. But it's a little bit tougher on these boards. That's why I don't spray it right on the board. Really. factory didn't even clean theirs off. I mean when they do their flow through they do a really nice job and some of these were worse than others. This for some reason, I don't know, this serial number must have been a, uh, just found another solder joint. This serial number here must have been one that they didn't really have any solder joint issues with because uh, knock on wood. I haven't found that many on this board or this particular radio. There were some on this board here. That's one I wasn't getting uh, any output. I was getting minimal output and it actually ended up being uh, solder joints on there. And I can't even remember. It's been so long but I actually had to re-solder but that took care of that. So see that's done. Let me put a little bit of solder on here before I put it away. Okay so this connector's back in. Seems like we can wiggle it. Nothing's going wrong. And that resistor that we replaced or, wherever it is is up there somewhere. Um, So that takes care of the, the service update for that. And I guess we got to put it back together and give it a test run, see how it goes. It still puts out, we had the full power. Um, and that's it. So once we get it back together, we'll show you what it looks like buttoned up as if you haven't seen it a billion thousand times. We'll go from there.